In Creo Parametric, you can use ProProcess for assemblies to capture the fabrication process for your assemblies. In a previous video, I started off the process plan and put in the first step for the base component. In this video, I'm going to create five other additional process steps in order to give you a flavor for the process. And to orient you to my model, I'm going to change over to a combination state that I set up. In the previous video, I performed step one where I put in the blue component as the base component. In this video, I'm going to start off with step two where I'm going to add in a couple components and their fasteners as step two. In step three, I will add in the red components and their fasteners. Step four will be a general step. And step five will be a step where I add in the green components. And then in step six, I am going to disassemble some tooling. So with that, let me go back to my default all state. And let me change over to the window where I had started the process plan. And if you take a look in the model tree, we have the assembly that I added in step one. And here we have the assemble step. I will choose the sequence button. And actually, let me show you step one. Let me go back to play steps and then set step. And I will choose step one. So there you can see that base component. So now let me hit the done button out of the menu manager. Let me go to the sequence command and I will choose to create a new step. And it will be an assemble step. The other choices are disassemble to remove something. If you have disassembled something, you can reassemble it. And then there is a reposition step in order to move a component and a general step in order to perform additional process steps like maybe you are going to lubricate components like I'll show you later on. And so with assemble selected, I will choose the done button and it shows the components from the assembly in a dashed outline. You could choose to add a different model instead if it's not already part of the process assembly. And for the different types of components, you could use a standard component, a fabrication unit like I created in the last video, a bulk item, or tooling. So with this, I'm going to leave it set to standard components. I'm going to start off by selecting a couple of components right out of the graphics area. I want these two parts over here. And to facilitate things and make things a little faster, I'm going to pick the different fasteners right out of the tree. I happen to know that they are these components over in here. So let me grab them. And now I'm happy with all of those. Let me hit the middle mouse button, which is the same thing as hitting the done. My menu manager ended up going behind the main window like before. And so that's good for all the components in this step. Let me choose the done button. And for the model dialog box, let me grab the corner and make it a little bit wider so that you can see everything. We have an optional description, but I recommend that you fill that in. And so for this one, I will write the description as assemble condenser shroud. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And then let's see for the time estimate, I will use a value of 0.2 for this one. And the cost estimate, let's choose a value of 4.5. And there are some other elements in here. I could define a simplified rep if I needed one. Here we have explode state. And I do want an explode state associated with this step. So let me double click on explode state. And that opens up the exploded views dialog box. I will choose to create a new explode state. I'm going to call this step underscore zero two. And now I can right click on that step and choose edit position. And this brings up the same dashboard that you use for creating explode states. And so I am going to select a couple of the components. Let me select this one and this one using the control key. I'll grab these components and position them up above. Let me grab these components and I'm going to drag them out over here. And just for the sake of speed, I'm not going to grab the other different fasteners. Let me grab these two over here. 
and drag them out as well. And you can add explode lines. I'll just create a few explode lines. This icon on the dashboard allows you to create the offset lines. And you can also go to explode lines tab. And it has a button that does the same thing. So I could create an explode line from here to here. Let me use the apply button. And I'll just do a few more. This here to this cylindrical surface. And choose apply. And let me rotate the model around and take care of the other two fasteners over here. Come on, let me get that surface. Hit the apply button. And then this surface. And this surface. And hit the apply button. Okay, so that is good for the explode state for this one for now. I can always go back and touch it up. Let me hit the close button out of the explode lines dialog box and then I will hit the check mark this brings up the exploded views dialog box you'll notice that step two has a plus sign in parentheses meaning that I have made changes to the explode state in order to capture them I need to use the save button which I can get to from the right mouse button and then I'll choose OK out of the save display elements dialog box and I've got my explode state the way that I want it to be I'll click the close button and there we have everything for the second step so that's good let's choose the OK button and let me collapse the model tree over here there you can see that we have our offset lines and our step two listed in the tree okay since I am recording there's this weird thing where my menu manager keeps on going behind my main window but that's okay let's create our third step so I'll choose the new step button and we'll choose to assemble once more I'll click done out of the menu manager it shows the other components in a gray color so once again I can pick the components that I want to use by using the graphics area but I actually want to grab the next higher level assembly so I'm going to tap the right mouse button for query select that way I get the sub assembly so that's good for that and once again I can expand the model tree if I want to pick the components I happen to know that the components that I want are in a pattern in this case it's just a little easier and faster for the sake of this demonstration to pick them out of the model tree rather than rotating around on the computer screen and since my menu manager went behind the main window let me hit the middle mouse button which was the same as the done button so that's good let me hit done once more and for the description for this one let me double click on the the elements and then type in what I want to use let me click OK and once again we can change the time estimate let's use a value once more now well, this time I'll use 0.3 and for the cost estimate I'm going to use a value of 9 and I'll just create a very quick explode state let's go to the explode state command and I will choose create a new one and I'll choose step 03 as the name let me choose the edit drop down and edit uh, position and for this one again just for the sake of expediency I'm just going to grab these two components and let's drag them upwards and hit the check mark right click on the name of the exploded view and I'll hit the save button and then OK out of the save display elements and then we can close the exploded views dialog box so that is good for step number three yes I did not explode the different fasteners that attach them but again that is not so important for the sake of this demonstration so that is good for the new step let me choose the OK button okay so for our next step I will choose new step and this time instead of using an assemble step I want to show you some of the different options that you have in the general step type so I choose that and then click on done and here are the default kinds of general steps that come available to you so for example there's ones like caulk clean drain fill lubricate paint torque verify and general 
And so for this one, we're going to choose that this will be a lubrication step. And then I'll choose done out of the menu manager. And let me double click on the description. And I'm filling in the descriptions because when I document this later on, these different descriptions will appear in my drawing. So this will be uh, lubricating the motor chat. There we go. Let me click the OK button. And let's also enter in a time estimate. I'll use a value of 0.1 for this one. And I'll leave the cost estimate as zero. Since this is a general step, another choice that we have in here is to specify the references for this step. So I will double click on them. And in the menu manager, we get add references. And you could choose component, feature, surface, edge, curve, quilt, or datum. Let me choose surface. And for the surfaces that I want to use, let me rotate around here and I'll get the surfaces there and hit the middle mouse button because my menu manager went behind the main screen. So that's good. Let's choose the OK button from there. Once again, let me go to my model tree in order to show you those different things. Okay, now for the next step, I'm going to assemble some components, but these will not be standard components. I'll use some of the other different options. Let me choose a new step, and for the type, I will leave it as assemble and then hit the done button. And so the default is a standard component, but now I'm going to bring in my fabrication unit. And when I choose that, list any fabrication units that have been previously defined. I only have one. So I will choose the done button for that one. You can see it previewed in the green color. And then we have the option here to accept the current occurrence of the fabrication unit. I will choose accept. And now we see the component displayed. For the next component, let me choose select. And this time I'm going to bring in some tooling. And so for the tooling, let me actually choose add model to bring in the tooling. And then I will choose the open button. Let me grab a part from my folder. This is a little fixture that will help me place the motor unit in the model. And this opens up a move dialog box from Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier. There's some different motion types like orient mode. There's also translate and rotate. I find adjust easiest to use because this is sort of like adding constraints to the model. And let me turn on my datum axis display. I'm going to line up some axes from the models to the uh, component that I am placing. From the motion reference drop down list, you can select a plane. You could use an entity or edge, a plane normal, two points, or a coordinate system. I will choose entity edge, and then I will choose from the model. There's a datum axis that I want to grab. Let me use my selection filter to try to make it easier for me to grab it. There we go. And then for the component, I'm going to pick the axis that I want to use. And it shows some arrows for the direction for aligning those two things. I'm happy with that, so I will choose the OK button. And when I zoom in and zoom out, it essentially repaints the computer screen and adjusts the location of the component. So that's good. Let me use the pick icon to select the axis over on the other side. So that's good. And then I will choose this axis from the component that I'm placing. I am good with the direction. Let me choose OK. And let's see for the next constraint that I want to use. Let me change the motion reference from entity or edge to selecting a plane. I'm going to pick a plane right on the motor unit. I'm going to have to do a bunch of query selects in order to get to it. And then for the surface that I want to align to it, I'm going to query select to the back surface and then left click. And this opens up the menu manager and the choices are mate, mate offset, align, and align offset. Those are essentially the Pro Engineer 2001 constraints that you had before coincident and distant. 
in this case, I want the make constraint to be used. Let me zoom in this new out. So that's good for that component. It's got it placed in there the way that I want. I will choose the OK button to let uh, Creo Parametric know that I am done with that component. Hold on, let me bring the menu manager back using Alt Tab. All right, so then we have underneath the package commands, we could choose to move the components some more. There's a finalize option, which means it'll essentially leave it packaged, but I'm going to choose to fix the location so that component will be stuck right there. Let me use this button and then hit the middle mouse button and let me hit done return. And so that is good for that tooling that I have brought in. Let me hit the done button for all the components that I want in this step. And so let's see some of the other different options in here. Let me double click on description and type what I want for that. Okay. And for this, let me just double click on the cost estimate and I'll give it a value of 12. And for the time estimate, let's use a value of 0.3. And everything is good in here. Again, I could create an explode state if I want to, but I already showed that earlier. So let's proceed on. I will choose the OK button. And so now we've got the fifth step in the model. For the final step in this video, I'm going to take out that tooling that I had just added in. So let's choose new step and then disassemble and click on the done button. And so for the components that I want to remove, I will select this component. Let me middle mouse button. And then I will choose done out of the menu. And so let me type in a description and this one will be remove fixture. And then click on the OK button. And again, you can put in your explode states and time estimates and cost estimates. But let me click on the OK button. And then I will choose done return. So in that way, now we have a total of six steps in here. In between now and the next video, I'm going to put in the other different steps so I can show you how to document the assembly process with a process plan drawing.